Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 8 of Robot X, the reconfigurable walking talking sci-fi robot. We've got some way with making the robot walk in the past. It walks along on two legs, although we've had some problems with the actuators. So today we're going to be changing those actuators for some new ones and hopefully we can actually get it to walk forward. Once the robot is walking properly, we can address it up as different sci-fi characters. The first one is Bender from Futurama, and most of the cosmetics have been done on that. Bite my shiny metal ass. Whoa, mama! And after that, we're going to pick some other characters and basically build cosmetics, robotic arms and heads on top, and build it out to look like other characters. But let's have a look at those actuators. Up to now, I've been using actual cordless screwdriver motors with the chucks still on and lead screws in the chucks. There's a nut in there and that makes this go in and out. There are eight of them, but they're actually pretty sloppy and pretty wobbly, so lots of the code I've implemented has been to compensate for that, which is probably why it walks backwards. Some of the code helps it absorb the load when a leg is pushed in a specific direction, which makes it quite dynamic, but also means if there's a slightly off-center mass on the robot, it ends up traveling in that direction. So we're gonna get rid of the cordless screwdriver motors and put something much better in. I got these actuators from Gimson Robotics. Have a look at the Gimson Robotics website for all your robotic actuator needs. And these have actually been custom made so they go faster than the cheap ones you get on eBay and they match the existing actuators. Obviously one of these is retracted at the moment and one is extended. I've got about 100mm of travel which is about the same as I had before. And obviously when these are extended they're incredibly rigid still. Which is exactly what I need to get rid of that wobble. So now we need to do a little bit of a redesign and make some new parts to hold those actuators. The original design for the robot was done in Autodesk 123D Design, but I've now brought that design into Fusion 360. So the original design we had the pivot points in the middle of the knee here on this piece of plastic which was bolted onto the 2020 extrusion and the other axis for that end of the actuator are these yellow parts. Then there was another axis that then attached to the actual actuators which were 3D prints with the screwdriver motors sandwiched in between. So having them in the middle here meant they were quite wobbly and there's lots of bendy plastic. So what I've now done is designed the end of these caps to be slightly different and I'm also printing them in nylon which is going to be incredibly rigid and I'm really cross bracing them to the 2020 extrusion um, much wider there. The actual pivot points are wider as well so with the additional axis for this green part that makes both my axis and that means I should be able to hold those much more firmly as well as bracing them further apart with a more rigid material. So now we need to get all of these onto the robot. So these caps get changed for these, and of course the motors get changed for the new actuators.
All the actuators are fitted. This is feeling a lot more rigid than it was. There is a tiny bit of wobble, but it just feels much more solid with that wider bracing and so on. So I've used the existing power wires to wire to the motors. I've got these white wires as well on each actuator, which are actual limit switches built into the actuators. So those are going to get wired to the electronics so I never run the end stops. What I'm going to do for now is just break the PWMs to each side of the motor driver. There's one wire for each direction on each motor and one switch in the limit switch for each end of the actuator. What I should do really is add some additional logic up here. So only use a five volt signal from the switches, perhaps an AND gate that switches on and off the PWM signal, but I need to do some changes to the controller in the future, so for now I'm just gonna do it the nasty way and break the PWM signals. Well, it's a pretty nasty solution, but it does actually work. So it's all wired in, and now we're gonna switch it on. I haven't made any code modifications yet, and we're gonna see what it does. Right, so I think, all of that stuff should still work. Yep. Okay, so those actuators are quite a lot quicker than the last one, so I need to turn it down a bit. It's a bit jittery. But it feels a lot more solid. Well, hey, let's see what happens if I turn this on. So that's the walking algorithm from before. So that looks pretty good to me. Okay, I need to turn those motors down. All right, so all I've done is just turn down the gain on my controller and it's on a smooth surface now as well. And it seems to work much better. So let's just try that. So I'm pretty happy with that. The actuators are amazing. You can see it's much more solid and much more repeatable. I'm really happy with how that's come out so far. The actuators are so much more rigid, just changing that code makes it much more easy to tell what the robot's gonna do, and it does what I expect instead of wobbling around and doing something random. Obviously, there's quite a lot to be desired in terms of motion control, motion smoothing, and generally making it look like it's under control, but writing that code's gonna be much easier because obviously the robot is easier to control. The one thing I wanna do right now is make it walk forwards. To start with, I found it was much easier to get it walking like the Gonk Droid project. This means it's moving fast using dynamic stability with its body inertial measurement units to influence the hip and ankle joints to stay upright. I managed to tune out most of the slight sidestep the robot had by adjusting the hip centre points and the ankles as well. After that, I got it walking by just making it push one leg backwards when the other one is in the air. This worked mostly okay, and it's an easy way to get going. I really wanted to make it take some slower, more pragmatic steps, so after adding some more mass to the shoulders and turning up the gain on the side-to-side -side stability, I was able to make it essentially overbalanced so that the center of gravity remains over each leg for longer. The long-term aim for this will be to give it more time to take longer steps. It's mostly self-regulating using the inertial measurement units in the legs and the body. Remember there's one in each leg and one in the body. So I was able to work out when it passed particular angles and make it trigger the lifting and lowering of the leg at different points in the side to side motion. The motion itself is caused by one leg being off the ground, of course, and that means it falls sideways, which then triggers the leg down motion at the zero crossing point to catch itself. So it's fairly organic and we can change that zero crossing point to any other value. I was able to add another state that works out when the leg is straight and if a button is held down on the remote at the time it pushes the leg backwards. So this means it's able to take really small steps. There's currently no kick forward on the other leg so the steps are pretty small still. It's only just about working at this point but I'm pretty happy with it so there's quite a lot of tuning to do and quite a lot of improvements to make in the future. And of course now it stops gracefully when you want it to. 
I'm pretty much okay with that so far. Obviously, I've only had a limited time to actually print all those parts, design them, make them, change all the actuators, and program it to walk along. But I'm really happy now I've changed those actuators. It's much more rigid, it's much more predictable, and I can work out what's going to happen instead of spending ages with the wobbly drill motors and it not really doing what I expect. There is quite a bit more work to do, but I'm not going to do loads and loads more Robot X episodes. In fact, what's going to happen is we're going to improve on the walking as I build the characters on top. So the next thing that's going to happen is putting Bender's head and his body back on. Wipe my shiny metal ass. And making it walk along as Bender. Obviously he's a crazy cartoon character anyway, so it's a good one to start with. And after that we're going to pick another character and we're going to refine the robot as we go. I probably need to refine the controller as well to have more controls and get more data back from the robot so I can tell what's happening. So that's going to be an ongoing development. And that was the whole idea of the robot being reconfigurable and being able to add things to it. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects and you should also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and access to all my videos early. Also check out my Spreadshirt store for xrobots merchandise. Alright, that's all for now.